New York, the city of dreams. Home of the US Open, arguably tennis's toughest Grand Slam. In 2009, the media world watched on as tour number one and overriding favorite Roger Federer looked to claim a sixth successive title on the hard courts of Flushing Meadow. Standing in his way was Juan Martín del Potro, a 20-year-old Argentinian appearing in his first Grand Slam final. Few suspected the match would turn into one of the most dramatic finals in the tournament's 128-year history. Well, I knew that with Federer it was going to be very difficult because he has experience, he's the best player in history. But if I was focused, if I fought point by point, and if I played calmly, my chances could be improved or could be more even. And being very calm in important moments was key to winning. There followed an epic five-set encounter lasting more than four hours that would change the life of the 20-year-old from Tandil, Argentina, forever. Yes, I think that when I won the fourth set, he became a little nervous. I noticed he was a bit tired, and I told myself, it was my moment, I had to take my chances. And well, I went out as if to play my last tennis match ever, and managed to do everything right. Del Potro's first Grand Slam title transformed him into a global superstar overnight. But he'd rehearsed this moment many times over. I always dreamt of being a great sportsman. When I started to play tennis, my dreams were to win the US Open and to be number one. And now that I'm achieving these kinds of things, it's hard for me to believe that I'm famous all over the world or that people recognize me everywhere. The reception back in his hometown of Tandil was phenomenal and proved you don't need to be a football star to capture the imagination of the Argentinian public. It was incredible. The welcome was a dream. To see all the people out on the streets or all over Argentina enjoying themselves because of me, it was beautiful and I really think that it will stay with me for the rest of my life. Del Potro grew up in a provincial city of just 100,000 people, but his newfound fame has not changed his attitude to life or his sport. No, I think it's still the same. There are new things and new experiences, but I still have the same friends and the same things and the same family that I've had all my life. So in that sense, my life hasn't changed. At six foot six, Del Potro has never been able to hide on tour, but now comes the added weight of expectation. No longer a star in the making, he's now a player many predict will be the next world number one. Yes, I think it is important to be ranked as I am today. It shows that I've had a good season, but from number five to number one is a long way. There's a great difference in the number of points, there are many things along the way, but by working and waiting for the moment, I hope that it will arrive one day. His run to the final at the Barclays ATP World Tour Finals underlined he can live with the best, but Del Potro is frank, he has a gap to close. There is a difference especially between Federer, Nadal, Djokovic and Murray, who are the guys who win all the tournaments or reach all the finals and maintain a certain level regularly throughout the year. And that's where I am aiming to be and where I would like to be in the coming years. He still thinks of himself, I think, as a, as a junior partner amongst the very best. He keeps saying Federer and Nadal and Djokovic and Murray are that much of a level ahead of me. But to win a Grand Slam at, um, at his young age, it's, 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 a, it's a remarkable performance. And he's, really, he's got to be able to believe now in himself. If 2009 was a dream, 2010 is about reality. The year ahead will be a mental test more than anything. When this new star has to prove he isn't another of history's one slam wonders.
I didn't expect to win a Grand Slam at the age of 20, but I did know that I could have a chance of achieving a good result, or that I would have a chance that would come down to me, like that day on the final. And this is useful for me in the future, to know that I can go for bigger things. And that is wonderful. Next week on ATP World Tour Uncovered, a special report from Melbourne as the 2010 Australian Open reaches its dramatic climax. And we talk to another rising Gallic star of the game. Gilles Simon reveals the hope and hard work behind his journey to tennis's top table. Until then, don't forget to log on to atpworldtour.com for your 24-7 breaking news.